righteous women, Sadikot. I have to tell you, Beshat Tova, we are opening Chumash Mot, Beshat Tova Exodus. We are going out of Egypt. I'm going to speak about it in a few minutes. I would like to remind you that this Shabbat is Shabbat Mevachim. You remember it's Shabbat Mevachim, Rosh Chodesh Shvat. Rosh Chodesh Shvat is going to be next week on Shabbat. Shabbat is Rosh Chodesh, so next week I'm going to tell you the name of God that we need to concentrate on, Lasot Kavana. Next week I'm going to speak about it. I would like to tell you, please read the whole Tehillim. We're going to speak about Tehillim in Chumash Mot at the beginning at the, with these sentences. So we're going to speak about Tehillim too. I would like to add to this that Be'ezrat Hashem, let's, let's bless that Be'ezrat Hashem Egea Mashiach Tzitkenu B'mra B'amenu, Amen Shegea Mevaser Eliyahu, Anabi Eliyahu Tishbi Eliyahu, Gledi B'mra Evonu Mashiach Ben David, Eliyahu Nabi Zachur Latov Amen This chapter starts, Sefer Shemot starts with El Shemot Bnei Israel Those are the names of the children of Israel Habayim Mitzrayma, that are coming to Egypt you remember that at the end of Chumash Bereshit, God was already counting the children of Israel that went to Egypt, Shivim Nefesh. And now that we are opening Chumash Mot, He is again counting after the tribes already passed away. All of the tribes passed away, and those are their children. But He still counts them. It's just to show us how much Hashem loves the children of Israel. In this chapter, we know that it's called, He calls the children of Israel, Pchori Israel. He tells the children of Israel that they are Pchori Israel, which means you are my firstborn. All of the children, all of the people all over the world are God's children. But the children of Israel, it's written over here in Parashat Shmot, are called Pchori Israel. We are the firstborn of Hashem. All of the children, all of the people all around the globe are the children of Hashem. But we were chosen to be His firstborn. So I have to tell you, because we are His firstborn, we come from, our souls come from a very high place. Mitachat Kiseh Kavod, our souls from a very high place. So it's very important to remember that it's a merit to be a Jewish, to be the Jewish people. It's a merit to be a Jew. It's a pity if we don't remember that we are Jews, but still it's a very big merit to be a Jew. Please pay attention. Let's, okay. Oh, Brucha Ba. Brucha Ba Let's start. I would like to show you the end of each word, the end of each word at the first sentence of Chumash Shmot. Can you tell me what they come to if you join them together? Who can tell me? Tehi, <laughs> Tehilim. Look very carefully. <laughs> at the first sentence in Chumash Shmot, sh I need you to concentrate so we can. Uh, we can gain more from the lesson. Please listen, the first letters, the, the first sentence in Chumash Mot, the end of each word, you look at the letter at the end of each word, you can join them together, it's the word Tehillim. Wow. You see, Tehillim. Tehillim with one we, over here. I will speak in a minute about it, but I would like to show you th a few things of what we see over here. It's written Shmot. Shmot symbolizes each word in the word Shmot. Which Shmot is names. The, the translation is names. Each word over here, the Shin is Shabbat. The Mem is Mila, Brit Mila. And the Vav and Taf, Bet Filin. Those are three things that are considered ought a sign between Hashem and the children of Israel. You see the Tehillim? It's also a sign between Hashem and the children of Israel. Because Ruach HaKodesh, the Shekhinah was upon King David when he wrote Tehillim. We're going to speak about it in a few minutes. But first I would like to look at the word Shmot. We have Shabbat, we have Mila circumcision, and we have Tehillim, the Tehillim that we put on the hand, the men put on the hand over here. And those are signs between Hashem and His children. Now that they are going out of the land of Canaan, out of the land of Israel, they have to remember the signs between them and Hashem. And it's written like this. Shabbat is a sign. It's written Bachumash, Ki oti beni For it is a sign between me and you. 
עבור מילה, for the word מילה, for circumcision we can see, ונמלתם את בשר ארלתכם והאלוהות ברית ביני וביניכם. And that shall be the sign of covenant between me and you. And then we have ותפילין, והיה לאות על ידיך, and it shall be, a, and it shall, it shall be for you a sign on your arm. So each one of them is a sign. If you look in the Chumashim, it's written ot, there are three otot. between Hashem and between us. And those are Shabbat, Milah, Tfilim. This is how we recognize ourselves. So when we go out of the land of Israel, we have to keep those three in order to have, to, to have a to, Zehut Shalanu. Zehut, identity, thank you. Our identity, it's very important. That's why we have to keep each one of them. But look, it's more than that. Hashem gives us another hint. He says, Be'ele Shemot. And Be'ele Shemot means each word in those two Be'ele Shemot, and those are the names, each a letter in those, in t- those two words means Be'chayav, Vav is for Be'chayav, Adam, Lilmod, Ha'parasha, please pay attention, Ha'parasha, look, Be'chayav, Adam, and this together, all of it together is Be'ele, בחייו אדם ללמוד הפרשה, שניים מקרא ואחד תרגום. God gives us hints what to do when we are in exile, when we are not in the land of Israel. Look, this is שמות. Those can combine to שמות. You can see that? בחייו אדם ללמוד הפרשה, and the man must A man and a woman, they must learn the parasha, the weekly portion of the week, like we do over here. He, we must do that. Shnayim mikrat, twice we read the parasha. Now we, we, we study about it over here, and on Shabbat we read it, or you can read it at home. Be'echad targum. And once we need to read the translation in our Aramaic, Unculus, Targum, the Targum of Unculus. It's written from Be'ele Shemot. God gives us tools how to behave when we are in exile. And this is the, the first exile, the true exile of the children of Israel, Be'ele Shemot. So look, it's not only he shows us what kind of signs we need to keep in order to, to have our identity with us, but more than that, we have to remember to read and, and to learn the portion of the week each week. Shnai Mikra, twice to read it, and then once to read the Targum, the Targum, which means Unculus. You know, only the Yemenite read it on Shabbat. If you go to a Yemenite shul, you'll see that on Shabbat they read a sentence from the Torah, and then, and then there's a person standing over there, and he reads the translation in Aramaic. Only you'll see, if you go to a, a Yemenite shul, that's what they do. It's from Bet HaMikdash HaRishon. It's from the first temple. Those are traditions from the first temple. So look over here. Bechaya, and this is very important. Why? Because you remember that Yaakov, when he went to exile too, he was Shalem. We know from the Mikra that Yaakov was Shalem. Why? Because he kept his name, Shmam. He kept his language, Leshonam. And then Malbush and his clothes, the, the way that he used to dress. And the children of Israel also had redemption from, from Egypt because they kept their names, they kept their language, the, the holy language. Look at us, now that we're in exile for more than 2,000 years, we have a lot of children that do not know the holy language, Ivrit. A lot of children, some of us also don't know the Hebrew language. You know that your soul does know it. But you know, you don't, you don't recognize because it's your unconscious, in your subconscious. That's why you don't really know it. But look at us, some of us also don't know the Hebrew language. So some of us also don't know the Hebrew language. It's so important. And it's so important that we will teach our children. You will see a lot of people that daven in Hebrew. They do read it in Hebrew, but they do not understand what they are reading. So they don't have the, the emotional meaning, the emo- feeling that they have to those words. It's very important. So they don't have it. And it's part of us. The Neshama should recognize because then you'll know when to even to drop tears when you daven. Because it's part of you. But I have to tell you that davening, tefillah d'oraita, we have two kinds of davening. One of it is tefillah d'oraita, which means the, the davening from, from, from the Torah. 
And another davening is Tfilah de Rabbanan, which means Tfilah, the davening that we have, a prayer that we have from our sages, that they wrote the Sidur, the Machzor, our sages wrote it. So we have two, two kinds of davening. The davening, if you do not know how to read from a Sidur, how to read from a, a Sidur or Machzor, you can daven first from your heart. This is Tfilah de Oraita. This is a davening from the Torah which means you don't need anybody to contact you with Hashem. Hashem is with you all the time. The Shekhinah is with you all the time. And I will show you how the Shekhinah went down to Egypt with them. I will show you from, the, from what is right, written in Chumash Mot. So the Shekhinah is with us all the time. So what you need only to do is just look up, up to Hashem, to the sky. Just look over there and dive into Him and say whatever you have in your heart. And your mouth and your heart should, should be even, should be the same. You shouldn't say nothing that you don't really mean it because Hashem knows everything. We can tell every, uh, any people whatever we want. We can tell them whatever we want. We can sell them whatever we want. But Hashem knows our heart. So we have din v'cheshbon. The real judgment is with Hashem, not with human beings. So we shouldn't be afraid of human beings. We should, you should be afraid of Hashem. All of us should be afraid of Hashem. That's why it's so important to be honest. If you can't be honest, Zip your mouth, don't say anything, it's better. Then your heart and your mouth are even. <laughs> but if you, if you have to, don't say anything. Just learn how to be silent. Sometimes it's better to be silent. Rabbi Shimon says, I didn't find, but it's written, I didn't find anything good for the body except for silence. Which is true. <laughs> the more we speak, the more bad things we do. Because you know, everything starts with a thought. Once we thought about something, I hope everybody thinks about good deeds. Once we thought about something, and, we, and the next step is to take it out of our mouth. When we took it out of our mouth, the third step is just going to go and do that. But it's very easy. You know, when a person loves someone, and he says, and he takes it out of his mouth, and he's, he has sentences of love towards that person, how he appreciates him, you know what happens? He begins to love him even more. Because his ears hear that, and he starts to encourage himself to say more beautiful things about this person. And when we get angry, over here, first in our minds, we get angry, and we start taking the anger out of our mouth, you'll see that we become more angrier than that. We become more frustrated, because the words that we take out of our mouth, the ears listen, and then yet Sarara works, you know, the bad spirit works over time with us. That's why it better, it's better to be silent. So I told you that the Shekhinah went with them. And look how beautiful it is. How do we know that the Shekhinah went with them? It's written first in Parashat Baigash. I opened it over here. It's written, it's written like this. Um, God tells Yaakov Avinu that he should go to Egypt. And he encourages him to do that. And he says... I'll translate in a minute. It says, "Vayomer Elokim leIsrael b'marot alala." Vayomer Yaakov, Yaakov. You remember he called also Abraham, Abraham, and Yaakov says, "Vayomer Hineni," and Abraham also says, "Hineni." You remember? Vayomer Anochi Ha'el Elokei Avicha Al Tira Mirda Mitzrayim Ki Legoi Gadol Asimcha Sham Anochi Eredim Cha Mitzrayim Av Anochi Al Chagam Alo VeYosef Yeshet Yado Al Enecha. Well, he tells him. Listen, don't be afraid of going to Egypt, because I know that this is Arvat Haaretz. A lot of sins are over there, committed over there. Don't be afraid. Go to Egypt. I'm going to go with you, and I'm going to take your children back from Egypt and take them to the land of Israel. Hello. I'm going to take them up to Israel. You remember I told you, he who goes out of the land of Israel is called Yarad Misrael, like he went down, spiritually went down, because the land of Israel... The eyes of God is on the land of Israel. There's a, a, a straight connection between Hashem and the land of Israel. And all other nations and all other countries, there are angels, sarim, ministers of Hashem that are responsible for each country. And Hashem, the only place that Hashem is directly over there is, is Eretz Israel. That's why he who studies Torah in the land of Israel understands more. You know, his mind opens up towards what he reads in the Torah. He understands more. So let's see, how do we know that truly God went with the children of Israel to Egypt? And look, everything that God says, he does. He's not like a human being. He doesn't give promises and he does not fulfill it. He does fulfill everything. Let's look at the Ele and those. 
Vav is 6 in numerical value, Aleph is 1, Lamed is 30, and He is 5. How much is it? How much? 30, 36, 41. You remember God has 42 names. 42 names. It says the 42 names of God went with the children of His, the name of God went with them to Egypt. You see it over here, Be'ele. Which means, you remember the 42 names that we already say every day? We say, Anna bekoach gdulat eminecha tatir tsrura, kabel rinat amecha sagvenu tarenu nora. We say that for each day. For each day we have a combination. For example, Anna bekoach gdulat eminecha tatir tsrura. You see, this is for Sunday. This is the name of God that we mention for Sunday. We have for each day the name of God that we mention in Shacharit. And also when we go to sleep, when we say Shema, we also mention the names of God. So we can see over here 42 names. God went with the children of Israel. And on the continuation of the sentence, it's written, Ish Ubeito. Ish means a man and his ha house, his home. Ish means a Kadosh Baruch Hu. It means Basod, a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Ish means the Shechina. Bebeito, bebeit dino, beit dino za shechina. Hakadosh baruchu bebeit dino, which means beit dino za elokim. And you will see that elokim in gematria. You remember that this is a hey. I don't write a hey over here. But in gematria, in numerical value, it's 86. Only 86 years. There was really hard hardship over the children of Israel. Bidiuk keminyan keminyan elokim. Bidiuk. That's the shechina. So let's continue. I'm going to wipe the board, and we're going to continue. Keminyan Elokim. Elokim, with a hey, Aval. It's 86 in, in numerical value. I would like to tell you, dear women, that you will see now, in the book of Yirmiya, she had a, a, very, a very good question. She said, why did they have to go to exile in Egypt? First of all, God told Abraham Avinu, He told him that your descendants are going to be slaves in a land that is not theirs. That's what he did. He had to fulfill it. Please uh, lower yourselves. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. I would like to continue. It's written in, in the book of Yirmiyahu. Shuvu banim shababim. Shuvu banim shababim in the book of the prophet Yirmiyahu. Those are the days now when we start Chumash Shmot. Those are the days that we have to, to do tshuva. Why do tshuva? Because it's shuvu banim shavavim. It says, naughty children return. Naughty children return to Hashem. Shuvu banim shavavim. How do we return to Hashem? By doing tshuva. Shavavim stands for. Look, shavavim stands for. Shmot. The portion of the week that is called Shmot that we are studying right now. Bab is the next portion, Vayera. Vayera. Bet is Bo. Then Beshalach. Yud is when we receive the Torah on Har Sinai, and many Mishpatim, look how beautiful it is. Those are the portions that we have to do tshuva. It's a shuvu banim shavavim, it's very important for the Chodashim on the, on the months of Tevet, the Jewish months of Tevet and Shvat. We read those portions of the week during Tevet. Now we started. We have two weeks of Tevet. We are in the middle of the month of Tevet. And we have Chodesh Bat. So we read those portions of the week on those Chodeshim. The Hebrew months, Tevet and Shvat. And it's Harizal says, it's from the sword. We need to do Tshuva on those Chodeshim. Mishpatim, <laughs> Mishpatim. If we have Shana Mu'beret, that we have Adar Bet, you remember we have Adar Aleph and Adar Bet. When we have Shana Mu'beret, we add two portions, Truma Betetzaveh. We add two portions when we have Shana Mu'beret, when we have Adar Bet. Listen, dear ladies, it's very important. 
I would like to tell you what the Arizal Zchutot Aganonon says about it. It says from the Arizal, he says, "Shuvu banim shavavim." Those those weeks that we read, those portions of the of the week, are called yamim shel tshuva, the days of the redemption. Al 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 pgam amachshava ukedushat ha'enaim, which means we have redemption on two things. We do tshuva now for the thoughts, the bad thoughts that we had in our head, and also the bad things that we saw with our eyes. Why? Listen what Harizal says. That's why it says Shuvu Banim Shavavim Birmiyau in the book of Birmiyau. Those are special days, and we have to read those portions. And if we read them, it's like we did Shuba. It's not only reading, but reading with kavana, having the sorrow for the children of Israel, reading it with kavana, not only listening, but looking at the words and feeling what they felt then. Then it's real Shuba. It's very and why. Why do we say, you remember what I read for you from Parashat Vayigash, I told you that God told him, don't be afraid to Yaakov, 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 and he says, Ineni, I'm here. He says, don't be afraid, go to Egypt, and I will be there with your children, and I will take them back from Egypt to the land of Israel. But then what he says at the end of the sentence, he said, Yosef, yashet eno yado alenecha, and Yosef, your son, will put his hand on your eyes. Which is very weird to translate. What did he mean by saying that? That he will, that the eyes will stay holy, not see bad things. The eyes will say, and why the eyes? Because you know we have thoughts through the eyes first. We have to. It's like a camera. We have to. It's like a camera. Our eyes are like a camera. You know everything that we see, even bad things. It's, they go to our mind, and it's you know you know how a computer works. So we put it in a, in a file. It's in a file. And then what happens? We remind ourselves about it, and then we see everything in front of our eyes. It's in our mind eyes. But first we saw it with our physical eyes. So it's very important what we see with our eyes. There's a story about Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan used to sit down outside the mikveh. He was beautiful. He was such a beautiful man. He was handsome. He used to sit outside the mikveh. And they used to ask him, why do you sit over there? Don't you, aren't you afraid of Ainara, of the evil eye? Aren't you afraid of evil eye? So he said, no, I'm not afraid. I'm the son of Yosef. You know, Ben Porat Yosef, Ben Porat Aliyah, Ben Sada Alisha, I'm not afraid. Yosef received in Parashat Vayechi the, the blessings from Yaakov against Ainara, Ben Porat Yosef. And you remember that Yosef, Yosef Begimatria equals Kina. You remember jealousy. Yosef in numerical value is jealousy. How do we know that? Because Yud is 10, Vav is 6, Samech is 80, uh, 60, sorry, Samech is 60, and Pe is 80. Together it's 156. And Kina is the same, Kuf is 100, Nun is, uh, is 50, and Aleph is 1, and He is 5, together it's 156. So Yosef is Kina, is jealousy. Now, what's so important about our eyes? I told you that the eyes have the name of God. If you look at the eyes, look, I equals, I in Hebrew, I equals five times 26, the name of God. So it equals 130. We have two eyes, okay? So I'm going to add another eye. I have 260. I have 10 times the name of God when I look with my eyes. With my, sp with my physical eyes, the question is, with what eyes do I look? With the physical eyes or with the spiritual eyes? So in order to, this is exactly the tikkun, it's, it's, very, it's the fixing. Those are the parshiot. Arizal says, those are the parshiot of the fixing. We have to concentrate on them. Why, especially men, today also women, because the, the big eyes that they have for women, you know, it says, Marbe nashim marbe kshafim. It says in the Mishnah, Marbe nashim marbe kshafim. He who looks at women and likes to have a lot of women has a lot of uh, witchcraft around him, a lot, a lot of magic around him. Marbe nashim marbe kshafim, says the Mishnah. It's very bad because with the holy eyes, each eye, I told you, equals 20, 5 times 26, the name of God, Yudkei Vavkei. 
So each eye, it's very important what we see with our eyes. In order to save them, to be holy, he says, Yosef, your, your son is going to put his hands on your eyes. And I told you the hands also have the signature of, of Hashem because each hand has five fingers. So the five fingers are hey of Hashem, the hey of Hashem, and another hey of Hashem. And we spoke about hands, but once uh, later we'll speak about hands. I won't do it now because we have a lot to talk about. So you can see that he tells him, because Yosef did not, you remember that, she not, uh, that the wife of Potiphar tried to seduce him, and he didn't look, and he, didn't, he wasn't tempted to do with her anything. And he stood with the test, and he was a very big tzaddik. He didn't do anything. So because of him, it helped all the children of Israel, so they won't do bad things with other women, with Egyptian women. The ones that did do was killed on the plague of Choshech, of darkness. All of them, the ones that went to the 50 gate of the impurity of Tum'ah, they were killed. 80% of the children of Israel were, were killed. When the plague of darkness was, 80% of them were killed. And then they had the opportunity, the children of Israel, just to bury them that the Egyptians won't know about it and won't see it. So we can see over here that we have the chance to do tshuva. And why, why, nobody asked me, why by reading we are doing tshuva? How come by reading we are doing tshuva? You know, when the temple was, was, um, was you know that we took our banot, we took sacrifices and brought it to the temple, and this is how we, do, we did tshuva. We saw what, what happens to the animal that we put over there, the sheep or any animal that we put over there. We saw what happens to it, and then we felt this is what should have happened to us. Because, for example, Pgama Brit, he who goes to different women and, and spread his sperm, spread, spread the sperm, because each drop of sperm has the code of life inside it. It's not just the sperm, it's not for pleasure. It has the, it has the code of life in it. It's like I'll take a seed of a, of a tree or of a plant, and I will just plant it, I'll put it in the ground, so once I put it in the ground, it has the coat of life for the whole tree and, uh, and also the fruits and the leaves, everything. It has the coat of life. The sperm has the same thing. So because of that, those chapters are to do tshuva. If you remember, I told you on Chanukah, by looking at the candles, you do tshuva for spreading sperm freely, I'll call it, <laughs> without even thinking about how precious each drop of sperm is. So this is for doing tshuva over that, avur amilap, gamma brit, and it's very, very important. I have to tell you, the Torah says that he who does that, he who takes zera levatala, is sentenced to death by the Torah. So the problem is that you cannot fix it. It's, it's almost unfixable. One way to fix it is to do really tshuva in your mind. When you do tshuva, you say Shema Yisrael. When you come to Shema Yisrael, you say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elohim Hashem Echad, on the Daled. You have to pronounce very well the Daled. Daled, the numerical value is four. You have to think like you're giving your soul to Hashem and you're going to die by four deaths, by bed din, by judgment. You have to, which means chenek, suffocating, srefa, burning, skila, throwing stones about on a person, and herig, and killing. Like you're going, you're giving your soul to Hashem to do that. If you did that and you did really tshuva, only Hashem knows if you did tshuva or you didn't. Because He knows what you feel in your heart and what you really truly think. If you did that, it's like you passed away, you died and you came back. This is the same thing. So doing tshuva of Gamma Brit is also by reading those parashot and it's very important. Yes? Someone doesn't know and is ignorant of not knowing. Is it still that harsh, the judgment? If you didn't know the chok, the, the laws, it doesn't, it doesn't give you any, um, any excuse not to be punished. But you, it, gives, it gives you a merit. Because you can say, I didn't really know, so God will consider that while he, he thinks how to punish you. How to punish you. You understand? But it's still... We know everything. As a babies, before, we, we gave, right. before our mother gave birth to us, to, in, into this world, there's an angel that teaches every Jewish child in the belly of his mother, in the womb of his mother, the whole Torah. We know everything. We come to this world only to remind ourselves. 
You understand? It's only to remind whatever you already know. You already know that. You already studied everything. There's a candle on your head and the angel teaches you everything. Every, every Uba, every child in the womb of his mother learns the whole Torah. He doesn't come to the world without knowing the Torah. But once he goes out, there's an angel that give, gives him a slap on the mouth and then he forgets it. So we are only reminding ourselves. Surely, ladies, we are reminding us. And what do we do? But by knowing only the stories of the Torah, it's only the body of the Torah. It's not the soul yet. We study the pardes. We go inside. We learn the inside of the Torah. We learn gematria. We learn the letters. We go into the Torah. Then we have the soul of the Torah. Then you can feel in each one of your veins, you feel your soul waking up because you feel the truth of what, what is said. You feel it. You have to feel it because this is what is called the pardes. We, we travel through the pardes. And I have to tell you, we read Tehillim every time. And on Rosh Chodesh, which I told you, I don't know if I told you, please this Shabbat, try to read the whole Tehillim. Okay? Even if you don't go to shul, try to read it at home. Take your children, sit down and read. The whole book, of course, because it's Shabbat Mevarchim. It's very important, Shabbat Mevarchim, to read the whole book. Why? We have group on Shabbat. We're reading all the... That's okay. That's excellent. If you... The parts of the... Yeah. Can. That's okay. But if you don't go, if you don't go at home, read it. Excellent. Excellent. I will explain why Tehillim. Why I'm going... It's also from, the, from this... You won't believe how beautiful it is. I'm going to explain to you. No? I'll explain everything. I'm going to explain it with this parasha. Okay, dear women, because I have to tell you also stories about Moshe Rabbeinu and how he was born and what happens. You say that we have to read the parasha, that's our chuba. What happens if we hear it and we read the You hear how they're reading the Yudha Shu. You hear it and you read it in Are we allowed? Yes, you're allowed. But no, you don't read the healing while you hear it. No? No, 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 no. no. While they're reading from the Torah, you're not supposed to, to read the healing. You're supposed to concentrate on what you're hearing from the, the reader of the Baal Kore. You're not allowed. No, you have to concentrate on, on Baal Kore Omer, what he says Shh. during the reading of the, of the Torah. It's very important. You have to concentrate. No. And it's better that you, then after you heard, you'll go home and you'll read the, the, the Can portion. Can I read in Russian? Yes. If you can't read not in Hebrew. Yes. I read it myself. Yes. Now, please pay attention. I'm going to give you, this is only the first sentence. I'm going to finish the first sentence. You remember what I told you? I know you want to translate to each other, but just one minute. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, dear women, I would like to show you something and tell me what you see. This is only the first sentence from Chumash Shmot. I, want, I would like to give you from the Pardes first and then we'll go to all of the stories of Moshe Rabbeinu because it's very important, especially because we have groups of Tehillim and Sigalit has the group of Tehillim over here. It's so important to understand why we read Tehillim. Listen, yes. we have, we have over, you saw the Elish Mod Bnei Israel Abayim and those are the names of the children of Israel that came and you saw that the last letters of each word combined to the word Tehillim. And then we continue the sentence. It's Bnei Israel Habayim Mitzrayma, the children of Israel that went Mitzrayma. Look at the last letters of each word. What do you have over here? Lala, over here. Bnei Israel Habayim Mitzrayma, Mila, Brit Mila. Look at the Mila. Now let's look at the last letters of the, of the sentence. Mitzrayma et Yaakov Ishu Beito that went to Egypt. Ya Yaakov, every man and his and his whole family. Look at the last word. Tell me what it is. What do you have? Tshuva. Doing a tshuva. This is the first sentence. You saw what we gained. There was only a, this is only a tip from the first sentence of Chumash Shmot. Look what Hashem tells us. 
He told us hints how to really keep our identity in the Gola in exile. He told us the three signs that we have with him, Shabbat, Mila, Vetfilin. He gave us the, the three signs. Then he says, Vele Shmot, remember, you have to teach your children every week the portion of a week. You have to read it twice, and then you have to read the, the, the uh, uh, translation, the Aramaic translation. And then he says, listen very carefully. I'm giving you another hint. When you're in exile, read the healing. This will cause you to do tshuva. And tshuva over what? It includes also tshuva neged gamma brit. Neged taking seed to the sperm that men spread without even thinking for other women except their women, the wives. So he says it will do tshuva also for gamma brit, it says. And how, does, how do we come to that? Look how beautiful it is. Everything is still the first sentence of Chumash Shmuel. It says, why does Dafka, Tehillim, help to do tshuva for Bgama Brit, the, for the sperm, for spreading sperm, not for your wife, but for other women? Why does that do the tshuva for that? I didn't find the right word for that in English, so I'm trying to translate it in the right way. So first of all, it says, Hari says, the children of Israel, listen very carefully, the children, who, you, you can ask me, like she said in, at the beginning, this woman asked me, tell me please, why did they have to go to exile? What did they do? They were righteous. It's written, Shibim Nafesh. Nafesh, not a fashot. It's written over here in the continuation of the sentences. Shivim Nafesh, which means 70 souls. It, that, it's not written souls, but soul, as one soul, which means that they were righteous. They were all one group. They were united. They loved each other. Seventy souls. Each one of them was against one of the nations, against one of the seventy nations. That's how they were righteous. Do you understand? So what did they do wrong? That they had to be slaves in Egypt. But it goes back to the first person, Adam Arishon, the first man. Look over here. Adam Arishon, I'm writing it in short. This is the Adam Arishon. He sinned. And inside the Adam Arishon, there were all the souls. Once he, he sinned, all the needs of the sparkles of his soul became small sparkles. And they went inside other people. And then they went to Dora Mabul. Dora Mabul. Dora Mabul is the flood, the generation of the flood. It's from Adam Arishon. And then they went to Dora Palaga. Dora Palaga. Dora Palaga. Dora Palaga, you remember the, the people, the generation that built Migdal Babel, the Tower of Babel? Today is Zirak, the Tower of Babel. And then from them they came to the children of Israel. It's right. That's what happened. Okay. So what happened? Look very carefully. Dora Mabul, we know that the, the sin was, they sinned by stealing and also by spreading their sperm with other women that were not their wives. So what did Hashem do because of that? It's written over here in the parasha, Kol ben All the firstborn, all the boys that were born, not the firstborn, all the boys that were born, throw, throw them to the river. This is against what Dora Mabu the flood did, the generation of the flood did. It's midah keneged midah, God treats us measure for measure, midah keneged midah. Because they sinned, the children of Israel had to repent over that. And then we have Dora Palaga. It's written, have ne levenim. It says, let's build levenim, bricks. Let's do bricks. So what did the children of Israel do? It's written, which means that the Egyptians made their lives so hard and sorrow with cement and bricks. Exactly what the Dora Palaga, which built the Migdal. And when they built the Migdal, they built the Tower of Babel. So, what did the children of Israel build? Piton Veramses, the two cities, the Egyptian cities. Piton Veramses. Measure for measure. Because before they will receive the Torah on Mahmad Har Sinai, they had to be clean, totally clean, from all of the sins that their souls, because the souls come back. That's why I told you it's, it's such a merit that we have a Shur Torah and we are together. Because Bishchut, this Shur Torah, that you spread it out, because I told you, Adam Le'amal Yulad. You remember? Adam Le'amal Yulad, Le'amal, which means a person was born to work, but it means in Hebrew, Lamed is Limod, 
Ein al memenat lelamed, which means that a person was born in order that he will learn in order to teach others, in order to spread the word outside. So what you learn over here, you should spread it outside to other people. This is a big schut, a big merit. So Adam la'amal yulad. So we'll see over here that we had to mend all those souls because it's like it's, the souls came to different bodies. It's the same souls. And we mended it by being in exile in Egypt. That's what we did. So let's continue. And we'll see that it's written in Avodah Zarah, the page number five. Page number five, it's written, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Yochanan said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Shutam Tagan Alenu. Lo haya raui David lo to maaseh im bat sheva, velo yu Yisrael ruim lo to maaseh im chet haegel. It says, that David Amelech was not, he did not deserve what happened to him with Bathsheba. She was meant for him from Bereshit, from the beginning, from the beginning of creation. She was meant to be his. I'm going to tell you the whole story about Blin Neder, David Amelech, on Megillat Ruth. When we'll come to Megillat Ruth, I'll give you the whole story only about David Amelech, Blin Neder. So it says that he, he, he did not deserve that sin. And the children of Israel, when they stood to receive the Torah by Muhammad Har Sinai on the Mount of Sinai, so they did not deserve the Cheta Egel, the, the, the sin with the club. They did not deserve it. But Hashem did that in order that if a, a single person, individual, will see that he sinned and he will say, well, God won't, have, I shouldn't do tshuva because anyway I sin, and God won't re receive except my tshuva. God says, no, look at David Amelech. He sinned with Bathsheba, and still I received this tshuva, and not only I received the tshuva, Mashiach ben David is coming from him. And then we can see that the children of Israel, the whole that they mm -hmm. did, they, the sin that they did with the cloth in Cheta Egel. He, 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 did, he did sin, but because he didn't wait. Anyway, God would have given him Bathsheba. But God made it like this. He was supposed to do that before time because he wanted to give an example to other people. That's what said in Avodah Zarah, in the Gemara. Because he wanted to give an example to individuals. If you sin, look what I did for David Amelech. He sinned, he asked, he repented, and because of that, he has Mashiach ben David that comes from him. So it means it doesn't matter what we did in this world. We shouldn't do it anyway. But if we already did something wrong, we should do tshuva on it. And how, it's very, you know, it's, it says, what are the tools to do tshuva? It's very hard. What we need to do is just to teach ourselves, to do differently from what we did before. And then when we teach ourselves, it becomes, an, 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 a hergel becomes a second nature. When it becomes a second nature, it's our nature, it's part of our nature. But we teach ourselves, step by step. And when a person does, wants to do tshuva, he says, God says, open me like a, a, a pin. You know, the pin has a, has a hole in it. The machat has a small hole in it. He says, open this small hole for me and I will open paths for you for tshuva. I will send my angels to help you do tshuva. That's how what God says. Just open the small, the, small, the small hole that the pin has. Open that small hole for me, but I will do the rest for you. But you have to, do, to show the, an effort, to show that you want to do tshuva. It has to come from you. You understand? So you can see that we, we are speaking about, and children of Israel, when we are as a whole, for example, a lot of people sinned. They did a bad thing. They will take an example from the children of Israel that were supposed to receive, that they received the al Mamad al Sinai on the mountain of Sinai, the Torah, and they did Shuvah, and God took them and brought them into the land of Israel. So it's an example for us how to behave and what to do because Hashem already knew all the generations. He sees from the beginning of the world till the end of the world. So we can see over here that we need to do tshuva. And it says, how do we do tshuva? King David says that in his books. And it says like this, I don't know what to put over here so it won't fall. <laughs> okay. It's written, Mi Emalel. Okay, it says, Mi Emalel Gvurot Hashem. It's from Tehillim. We have it in Tehillim, the chapter 105, Kuf Vav. 106, sorry. 
תהילים צ'אפטר 106. עם מי המלל גבורות השם ישמיע כל תהילתו. He who wants to break judgment from himself, לכתוש את הדינים, גבורות מינס דינים, גבורות מינס דינים, judgments. He who wants to take the judgment, if for example a person sinned and he wants to take this judgment to, to make it soft to the judgment from him, he doesn't want that judgment on, upon him. So he wants to do a tshuva. What does he need to do? He should read the whole book of Tehillim from the beginning till the end without stopping in the middle, without speaking, without eating, without doing anything. To read the whole Tehillim. A big merit is to read the, the, read, to read the whole Tehillim on the Western Wall, near the Western Wall, the Kotel HaMaravi in Israel. That's a big merit. If you are there, sit down and read the whole Tehillim. Don't let anyone interrupt you. If you can do that. It takes like, if you, like two hours, two, two hours and a half, something like that. It depends. Well, but with Kavanah to read the whole Tehillim. So King David gives you in his Tehillim The, uh, the recipe, what to do? So it says, Mi emalel gvorot Hashem, he who has judgment upon himself, by Hashem, because of his sins, you do not have judgment, only because of sins. So, you know, there's a story about, I'll tell you right now, there's a story about Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa, because I want to tell you also the stories of Moshe, and I didn't get out of the first sentence. But there's a story of, uh, of Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa, there's a beautiful story. I'll tell it over here. So it says that Rabbi Yochanan ben Tosa came to a city in Israel and the people told him, you know, there's a snake, Arad in Hebrew, it's called Arad, a special snake. The snake kills everyone. He terrorizes all the area. He who he bites, dies. So Rabbi Yochanan, and they thought that it's by mistake he was there. The snake came and by mistake there were there, you know, coincidence. And they were there and he, and he died from the bite of the snake. So what did Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa do? He was a big tanas, chodot again alenu. He went to the hole of the snake. He put his leg on the hole of the snake. The snake bit him. And once he did that, he, he was standing and a god brought a mayan, a spring of water next to him. It was a miracle. He made a miracle for him. Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa went to that spring. He saw the spring. He went to the spring and he put his leg inside the spring. Because he put his leg inside the spring, in the water, the snake died. This is that way. It says, it's only the beginning. And then what happened is, once he put his leg inside the spring, he saw a child. He was drowning. So he took the child and he saved him. He saved the child. And the child told him, and everybody said, wow, thank you. And look, and you killed the snake. Nobody could kill the snake. He killed everyone. Nobody could, could, could kill him. So he says, he says to the child, you should thank the snake. Because of the snake that bit me, I went to the, the spring of the water, and that's why I saw you. But the, the, the real question is that Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa said, you know why the snake killed? This, it wasn't a coincidence. The snake kills because of your sins. It's, it, says in the, it says in the Mishnah that if you go to a spring of water, if you were bit by a snake and you go to the spring of water and you put your leg inside where he bit you, your leg inside the spring of water, before the snake comes to the water, the snake will die. But if the snake comes first to the water, the, the, the person will die, the human being will die. But so Rabbi... I'm sorry, but I heard that the Kedusha that had, was in that rabbi, Killed the snake. Yeah, but it killed the snake because he was righteous. He didn't, he didn't have any sin. So that That's was, it. Yeah, so what, what Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa yeah, what Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa said, the sins caused those people to die because otherwise God would see to that that they will have a river of water just next to them and they will put their leg in. But because he was righteous and he didn't have any sin on him, then the snake passed away, died. And not the, the rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan ben Dosa. So this is an example of how to do tshuva. And it says you have to read Yashmiya Kol, you have to read the whole thing from the beginning till the end. And then Bezrat Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu will receive your tshuva. And now we'll continue. <laughs> now we'll continue. We'll see that Pao, it says, it says that Pao, Look, it says over here about Paro, 
כתוב, ובני ישראל פרעו והשרצו והרבו ויעצמו, which means they became numerous, they, they became a lot of people in Egypt. And why? Because each woman had in her belly when she was pregnant at least six children. At least six children. At least. So they multiplied like rabbits. לכן בישרצו, you know that a scorpion, a crab, multiplies it one time, 70 scorpions he brings. So that's why בישרצו, it's like, a, like insects, they brought a lot of children, a lot of a lot of children. And it says that this king, והיה כמלך חדש על מצרים אשר לא ידעת יוסף, this king, the, there was a new king that came on Egypt, that ruled on Egypt, that he did not know Yosef. The, the Midrash says, there are two rabbis that say, one say that they, this, wasn't, this was a, truly a new king that came from a different place that truly didn't know Yosef. And another, and another explanation was that this was the same king. But they saw the Egyptians, that the children of Israel are multiplying in the numerous numbers, so they said, we have to do something. So they asked that king that knew Yosef, to do something against the children of Israel. And he said, no, God forbid, how should I do that? He helped us when we, had, we were starving. He did everything for us. He said, we couldn't do that to his, to his family, to his children and grandchildren and grand-grandchildren. So it says that three times they came to him and he did not agree with them. And then the fourth time they threw him away. Then he decided to come back and to rule over, over the Egyptian people and they, he told them, that he will do everything against the children of Israel, and he truly did. And look what he says. And he says over there, over there, He says, let's be smart, let's out outsmart him, the children of Israel, let's outsmart them, because then they are, so, they are great in numbers, maybe they will start a, a war against us. And the question is, look, there was a dream that Pharaoh dreamt. Pharaoh had a dream. The Midrash says, what kind of dream? He dreamt one night that when he was sleeping, then an old man came towards him. And he had a scale in his hand. You know the scale that we have in shops? The scale? So he had a scale. On one hand of the scale, he put all of the ministers of Egypt, all the very important people on one hand of the scale. On the other hand of the scale, he put a lamb, Tale, on the other hand. And Pharaoh was looking in the dream, and then he saw that the lamp was taking the scale down. So he came very, he went, woke up very disturbed. He said, what's going on here? So he called his advisors. He called three of them. Bil'am, Iyog, Beito. So Bil'am told him, Bil'am ben Bo, he was a wicked person. He was a prophet of the going. So he was a very wicked person. Bil'am told him, listen, it's, a, it's bad news. You remember I told you that the translation of, a, yes. of a, a dream depends on the mouth. You should always go to a beloved person that truly loves you in order to, to tell you what the dream meant. So he goes to him and he tells him it's a very bad, it's a very bad dream. It means that the children of Israel are going, to, are going to fight you and they're going to take your throne and they're going to go out of Egypt, they're going to ruin all Egypt. So he says, I think you should do something against them. But then Yitro said, Yitro stood up, and he was a very, a very big magician, Kohen Midian. He knew all of the idol worshippers in all of the world. He knew everything. Paul used to have a book that all of the gods were written in. Every nation with her god, except for the children of Israel. So every god was written in that book. So Yitro said, don't do that. Didn't you hear about the god of the children of Israel? Everything they do, he helps them. Didn't you hear about Abraham Avinu? Nimrod wanted, Nimrod wanted to take Abraham Avinu and put him, he put him already in Kibshan Esh Ba'ur Kasdim. You remember? He put him in the oven in Ur Kasdim. He put him over there for three days and he went out alive. You remember what happened to him? And then he says, you remember what happened to Yitzchak? He was a sacrifice. On, on the Mizbeach, on the altar, and the, the knife was on his throat, and then he, he was alive, and look at all the, his descendants. Until now, Yitzchak was one child. From him came all the descendants. So he says, and look what happened to Yaakov. He was 20 years with Lavan. You remember what Lavan did to Yaakov Avinu? What a hard hardship he had over there. How he outsmarted him with Leah, and then he conned him, he gave him Rachel, and then he conned him with the sheep. So he remembered for 20 years what he did over there. 
and then Esav that that that, uh, that wanted to kill him, and all what and Dina and, and Shechem, everything that happened with Jacob. He says, "You should. I, I should tell you that you should be good to the children of Israel. Then that God will be good to you." That's what it all said. And you know, King Pharaoh was very angry with it all. He wanted to kill him. So it all had to run away and ran to Midian. That's when he became Kohen Midian, the priest of Midian, because he ran from Pharaoh. Iyav did not say anything. Bilam, who went against the children of Israel, was sentenced by Hashem to be killed by a sword. He also did not say anything, was sentenced for suffering. He, he lost his children, God killed his children. Then he killed, then he took all his property. He was a rich and righteous person, all his property. He made him sick with tzarat. He made him sick, he used to live in the ground. He put all his, of his body in the ground, in, in, uh, inside the earth. So, I'll suffer because he had the opportunity to defend the children of Israel and he did not say anything. Because if you have the opportunity to defend someone, when you see evil things are happening to other people and you stand from the side and you let it happen, it's like you are the person that does it. You are judged like it because kaskama, a person who is silent when he sees injust, a, 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 injustice, he is part of it. He's just like just like the person who did it. Which means I agree with you, but I don't want to dirty my hands. Do it yourself. So that's why he was judged for suffering. And I will speak about the Yom when we'll come to Exodus, Yetziat uh, Mitzrayim and the opening of the Yam Suf. So, and we see, and we see that Yitro, because he defended the children of Israel and spoke highly of their God, God gave his descendants to be Belishkata Gazit. Lishkata Gazit is the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. He, he was a guy. And he became, he did Shuvah, and he became, his descendants were part of the Sanhedrin in Yerushalayim, in, in, in Jerusalem, part of the, the Beit Din Agadol, which was called the Sanhedrin, the judge, the, the big um, assembly that was called the Sanhedrin, and he, the, the, his descendants were part of it because of his marriage that he spoke for the children of Israel. Look what a merit can do. We do not know was what. He not Moshe Rabbeinu's, uh, yes, very yeah. special counselor. Oh, he was his father-in-law. Father. Yes, he was the tikkun of Cain. I hope I will get to it. He was the tikkun of Cain, and Moshe Rabbeinu was tikkun of Hebel. If I want to have time to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it in the next lesson. If I won't have now, I would like to tell you. So, there was another thing. The, the magicians of Khartoumim, of the Paro, saw also in, in the astrology, in the, you know, in the stars, they saw that there's go, they're going to be a child that is going to be born, and he is going to save the children of Israel, take them out of Egypt and ruin Egypt. But they said that they do not know if he is Jewish or Egyptian. And why they did not know? Look how God really <laughs> loves us. Because Batia, the daughter of Pharaoh, raised him. So he, they didn't know. They, they didn't know if he was Jewish or Egyptian. Because what they saw in the stars, that, that he was both of them, because he was raised by an Egyptian woman. By the daughter of Pharaoh. It says, you see, it says that Akdusha Metila Betsea, I'll explain it in a few minutes. Akdusha Metila Betsea Ben Aklipa, Betor Aklipa, Balem Shel Aklipa, which means. The Kedusha, the, the purity, lays her eggs in the middle of impurity. In the in, middle of impurity, it lays her legs, eggs. So look, where did they lay the egg? Hashem took Moshe Rabbeinu and put it in the palace of Pharaoh. Pharaoh wouldn't even think of searching for him. Pharaoh killed. At the beginning, he didn't want anyone to know that he intends to kill children. So what did he do? <laughs> He, he quietly told the, uh, the midwives, I think, the midwives, he quietly told them to kill children, the boys, to kill them. When they see them in the belly of their mother, the midwives did not do that. It's, he told them, kill the children. How? So they said, but we, we do not know if it's a boy or a girl. We have to take it out in order to see if it's a boy. He says, no, I will give you a sign. And what was the sign that Paul gave them? He says, if it's a boy, his face, once he comes out, when he wants to come out, his face is towards the ground, towards, towards earth. Because he was created from earth. Hashem created him from earth. If it's a girl, her face is upwards. It's towards Atzlaot. 
the, the uh, Sela ribs. It was the ribs. Because that's why her face is upwards, because this is the place she was created by Hashem. So he told them, you will know before they go out, so kill them before they go out. You'll see by the face, you'll see if, it's, if the head is towards the ground or towards the ribs. Look, uh, and they did not do it. And not How only they did huh? How did he know that? No. No. Because, I, you know, I, I last, I, yesterday I had also a lesson in Brooklyn. I have to tell you something. They asked me the same question. I have to tell you, the generations before us, they were more spiritual. Everyone, why? They didn't have this technology. We are not connected to nature. They had their basic instincts that were connected to nature. We do not have this gift anymore because it fell asleep. We, we made it go to sleep because we have all the technology. I don't know what we're going to do when we won't have this technology. We have light, we have everything. They did not have it. They were connected to nature. And look, connection to nature, Elohim, the Gimatria, it's 86 with a hay over here. It equals Hateva, nature. It's Hateva, Elohim. God is inside nature. We will see that when Mashiach comes. Inside everything that we see around us. But we are living in a world of lie because we can't see that. You understand? What we see is not truly the truth. It's only the physical world and we cannot see beyond it. Some of us do, but we have to be really righteous and to study. Because they were also, they were also in a spiritual, a high spiritual level, not like us. We all, we always compare that to our generation. It's very hard for us, but it's not the same thing. We are the Met Akva de Mashiach. We are the heel of Mashiach. This, those are, and we are, you know, it's a privilege to be in Yemota Mashiach. We are in Yemota Mashiach. Amen. Because we are part of it. And if we'll do the fixing, the last fixing, because we are the neshama, the souls that came over here, we will have the schut if, we, if Mashiach won't come right now, and we, God forbid somebody passes away, and he will have the, the schut to be alive when Mashiach is here. When the dead will come alive, become alive. So it's very important that we will do the fixing. By learning we do the fixing. By spreading it out to other people. It's a big mitzvah, it's a big merit. Which means that he who makes his friend do a mitzvah, it's like he did it. He did the mitzvah too. It's considered for him like he did the mitzvah. The merit is also for him. So it's very important. So we can see that he didn't know if it's an Egyptian or a Jewish boy. So they started doing that, but you can see over there that the, the uh, uh, midwives did not do that. Not only they did not do that, it's like Kefal Nashon. It's the, the Torah states that but chayena, which means they, they not only did not kill the children, the babies, but they did more than that. They did everything they can in their power to help them live. Which, uh, uh, for example, if a woman was supposed to pass away during her labor, they, they, to Hashem, they said, please God, then they will have a Lashon Ara, the other people, they will say that we did what the king wanted us to do. Please make her live. And if the child, something should, or the baby, something should happen to him, or, or he will be missing some parts of his body, they doesn't question. They said, please make it that he will have all of the parts of his body, that he won't be missing anything. So they did more, and if it was a poor woman, they went and got things for her to help her. So Paro called them, and he told them, what, did, what are you doing? I told you to kill the children, and you didn't do that. So they said, we can't, because... The, the women, the Jewish women, are like animals. They, before we come, they already give birth. So, but he said, but I saw, but I've heard, I have people that tell me that you help them. They said, no, we wanted to make, it seemed like we're helping them, so they would call us. They were afraid that we'll kill their children. So they were like animals, they gave birth. And how did they gave, give birth? It says, listen, because, because it says, by Abdu Baparech, which means they worked very hard, Baparech, But uh, how did Paro first make them be slaves? Baparech. It says in the Midrash, Baparech, Baramit. In Aramaic, it means Tapuchot. Hard labor, that's Parech. Work with hard labor. Tapuchot means everything upside down. What did they do? 
they made a work that was suitable for a woman, they made a man do that, and the, what a man was supposed to do, they made the woman do that. And then they made what an what a, a old person should carry, they gave to a young person, and what a young person should carry on himself, they gave it to an old person, in order to break their spirit, the Jewish people's spirit. Now they didn't want them to have children, so what did they, you know, something is very weird. When Pharaoh thought of, you know, the Jewish people, can continue their generations by the women. Because uh, the Jewish uh, religion is, is considered by the woman. So not only the Jewish people consider a Jewish person by his woman, but by his mother and not by his father. So it's very important. Uh, so the important thing was to do is maybe to get rid of the girls, not the boys. Why? Because the boys can't bring other children. The boys can't become their children, but women can. But Mapao, uh, because it was a, a, a place of the uh, Arva, which means they liked women and they wanted women, so he thought, wow, the Jewish uh, women, they have six children, they have six babies in one, in one time that they give birth. We should have them, we should take them for ourselves. But they did not remember that the Jewish uh, nation was built uh, upon Jewish women, upon Jewish mothers, because uh, the religion is, de is determined by the mother and not by the father. So anyway, let's continue. So how did they give birth? It says that they tried, the, the men when they were working and preparing the bricks, they used to, the, the, the supervisors used to leave the men over there at night and not let them go back home. So what did the women do? Because they didn't want them to be together and have zivu. So the women used to take water from the well for their husbands, and God made miracles for them. The water was half of the bucket was filled with fish, and half of the bucket was water. So they used to take the fish and prepare it for their husbands, and they used to take the water and boil it. And they used to come to their husbands, look how righteous women are. And they used to tell their husbands, because the husbands, the spirit was very low. That's why it says, "Bishut nashim tzad kiyamiyot nigalu am Yisrael mimitzrayim v'bishutan atidin ligael," which means because of righteous women, the children of Israel went out of Egypt, and because of them, they are supposed to bring Mashiach. When Mashiach comes, righteous women, it's so important. So it says, what did they do? They went to their husbands from their city, from Goshen. They came to their husbands and they took their their feet and their hands and they washed them with warm water. And they used to speak to them and they used to tell them, don't pay attention to these bad people. God said that he is going to take us out of Egypt and he is going to take us. Remember what God says, believe in his words. And they used to give them the, the fish to make, him, to make them stronger. So they used to give the fish for them to eat. So it says because of that they became pregnant. And once they became pregnant, when they had to give birth, they used to go to the field, and it says under the tree, an, an apple tree, under apple trees, they used to give birth. Now, God, and they used to leave the babies over there. It says in the Midrash that angels came to them, cleaned them, cut Hevel Atabur, the rope, they cut, the angels cut, the angels took care of them. And then God saw to that, that the angels will give two rocks to each baby. From one rock, rock, they drank milk, and from the other, honey. And it says that the Egyptians wanted to see where they gave birth. So what did they do? They went to the fields, and God opened the, the ground, the earth, so they would be swallowed in the earth, the children. And the Egyptians used to come and just lachrosh, and to take the ox, and to go over the fields in order to kill the children. But God kept all of the children. And then once they were strong enough, they, he took them out and took them, each one to his family. And nobody knew that those are the children because they were already Narim, you know, youth. They, they, nobody knew that it was them. So look how many miracles. And it says that Ish Levi Lakach Ishat Eshet Levi, which means Amram, which was Amram was the father of Moshe Rabbeinu. I'm, giving, I'm skipping because I know it's late. But I want to give you the, uh, some of the stories of Moshe Rabbeinu. It says that Amram, the father of the father of Moshe Rabbeinu, he saw that Pharaoh wants to kill the children of the children of Israel, the boys. So he divorced his wife. She was pregnant. She was in third month pregnant. So he divorced her. And he was from Shevet Levi, the tribe of Levi. Because he did that, all of the men did the same thing. They divorced their wives. And his daughter Miriam came to her father and she said, Father, 
What do you do? This is worse than what Paro did. She tells her father, how can you do that? Paro is a rasha, he's a wicked person. What he says, it's with a question mark. Either it happens or it won't happen. Because this is a rasha, God maybe will, will make it come true or we won't make it come true. But you're a righteous person and everything you take out of your mouth will happen. You remember that when Yaakov Avinu said that the one that took the, the God from Lavan will die, lo yichyeh, and because of that Rachel met him, she died, passed away before her time. You remember? Because it was a righteous person. Everything that comes out of a righteous person's mouth comes true. God gives his blessing to that. So she tells him, you, that's worse than that. And look, Paro, he, she, she says, Paro killed them in this world, but they have the next world. But you took from them the next world because you're not bringing souls to this world. And you have to know that when Mashiach comes, it says in the, in the Gemara, it says, There's a special, there's a special Eichal, a special place, in God's place, a special place where all the souls are. When the last soul comes to this earth, then Mashiach comes. That's what it says. Which means the last soul should come. And if you don't bring the soul, she says to her father, then how can Mashiach come? Because you are stopping, you are stopping the birth of children, so souls won't come to this, to this world. Do you understand the meaning? Of so he, he, was, he said, you know what? What you say is true. So he remarried her mother, Yochevet. And she gave birth when she was 130 years old. 130. Sarah Imenu gave birth when she was 90 years old. She gave birth when she was 180 year, 130 years old. And it's not mentioned over here because everything in that time was miracles. Everything, was, well, everything that happened to them was by, by miracle, which wasn't in the days of, of Sarai Menu. So let's continue. We can see that Moshe Rabbeinu, that the Sarai Menu gives birth to Moshe Rabbeinu. And when she gives birth, she sees that it's good. She rosh it tov. That he brings light, a big light to, to, to the house. And Tov, when, she, when it's written, I won't read it for you from here, but when it's written, from, when she says, Batar ki Tov, when she sees that he's, that he's Tov, Tov means good. Look at the value of Tov, the numerical value. Tet is nine, six is Vav, and Bet is two, which is 17. 17 is one of the names of God. Which kind of name? <coughs> Aleph. Kuf, this is a hey, Vav Kuf. This is the name of Da'at. You remember what Moshe Rabbeinu did? He was the Da'at of Am Yisrael. She saw that he's going to be the Da'at of Am Yisrael, which means what is Da'at? Da'at is the connection between wisdom and understanding and combining both, which is exactly what we're doing over here. We are listening to the stories of the Torah, the wisdom of the Torah. We are listening to the understanding, the understanding of the stories in the Midrashim of Chazat and the Gemara and the Mishnah. And then we are combining it with the soul of the Torah, the Dat. This is exactly the Dat she knew that Moshe Rabbeinu is going to be. The name of God for that is going to be on Moshe Rabbeinu. Because he's going to connect everything for the children of Israel and open their spiritual eyes to the truth of Hashem in this world. You understand? So she saw that. And then what happened? I have to tell you that the, the prophets of the Pao told him also when they saw that it's going to be that there's going to be born a child. When the child when the child is going to be born, they said, but this child is going to die through water. His death is going to be through water. Which was truly it was true. Because you remember that God punished Moshe Rabbeinu because he hit the cell of the rock to take, out, to take water out for the children of Israel. So what did his mother do? It says, Which means when a, it's not exactly a foolish idiot, it's not exactly but a person that doesn't know things. Okay? Ignorant. And an ignorant person, when he says something, don't think that it's nothing. Don't pass it away like it's nothing. Don't think that it. Don't don't let it be light in your eyes. You know, like it's light, light thing in your eyes. Why? Because maybe Hashem made him say that because in order for you to wake up. For example, I'll give you an example. It says about Rabbah. It says about him that he used to sit in judgment in bed din, and when the, once he sat in bed din, 
you know, sometimes the, the people that come in to Din are not satisfied from what they hear. They do not like the judgment. So one of them did not like the judgment, and he said to Rabbah, she Mekiso. Yipar Mekiso means that he will be taken out of, as a Dayan. He won't be a Dayan anymore. So what did his students do, his Hasidim do? They took his chair, Yipar Mekiso, literally, they took the chair and, and put it upside down, the chair, in order to break the curse from Rabbah. Also, one time, someone told Rabbah that he wishes him that he will drown in the, war, in the sea. So his Talmidim, his scholars, took his clothes, Rabbah's clothes that he wore, the same day that his, the, that student spoke, and they took it to the sea and, and washed it in the, in the waters of the sea in order to take that, that curse from him. What did Yochebet do with Moshe Rabbeinu? She heard exactly, she heard that he's going to die in water. So she wanted to take this curse out of him. So she took him and put him on the river Niles. She took him on the yard, on the river, and put him on the river Beguma, Beteba, and she put him over there in order to take it away. And it says that the, the, the daughter, and it says that Miriam was sitting, because she had to do that after three months, uh, it says that Miriam went to watch him. And why did she want to watch him? Because she wanted to know what about her prophet, because she told her father and her mother that they are going to give birth to a child that is going to save the children of Israel. And now her father gave her, it says in the middle, she hit on her head and he said, where is your prophet? Look what happened. What is your prophecy? Look what happens. We have to put him on, on the all. So she went to watch him from far away. And it says that Batya, the daughter of Pao, oh. saw this teva, saw the box on the water, on the river Nile. And she saw it. And it says that she wanted, to, she reached with her hand. She reached with her hand and because of that, because she wanted to save the child, she took her hand. Rashi says that her hand became very, it stretched out very long. And she could touch the, the box and bring it close to her. And once she opened it, the angel Gabriel, it says, gave him a hit to Moshe Rabbeinu that he would cry. So once he cried, it says that she saw him, but he was so beautiful, and he cried. You know, when you see a baby cry, it touches your heart. That's what the, God wanted, to touch his heart. So it touched her heart, and she wanted him, but she understood that she was, he was hungry. So she, she called nurses to nurse him, but Egyptian women. And he closed his mouth, and he did not want, because this mouth is going to speak directly to Hashem. It can't drink. Uh, a, a non-Jewish woman's uh, milk. So uh, Miriam saw that the few Egyptians, uh, Egyptian women came just to nurse him, but he didn't want to. He closed his mouth very, very strongly. So Miriam came to her and said, you, uh, you know, I know a, a Jewish woman that can nurse him. If you want her, I'll call her. She says, yeah, call her, and I will even pay her a salary for that. So she also, for two years, he was with his mother, and she also paid him a salary just to nurse him. This is because she saved. Because the midwives were, it says in the Midrash, were Yochevet and Miriam, and because she saved other children, God gave her the merit to nurse her own child. And then it says, when Moshe Rabbeinu came to the age of three, I will finish with this now, we'll continue oh, next week. Really. Yes. And it says that Moshe Rabbeinu, when he came to the age of three, it says that he was sitting on the lap of Paro. Paro. I would like to tell you that once Moshe Rabbeinu was on the water, the, Egypt, the, the Khartoumim, his magicians told him, the astrologers told him, that they can see that he doesn't need to worry anymore, he doesn't need to kill any more Jewish children. Because he was, he's already dead, he's on the water. So I have to tell you, it, it, it says that he took him on his lap, and his wife sat on his right side, and his daughter Batya sat on his left side. And the child turned towards Pao, and he saw his crown, and he took his crown from his head and put it on his own head. Bilam saw that and he said, that's a very bad sign. That's a bad sign. This child is going to take your kingdom. It's a very bad sign. He is going to take your kingdom. And, and the Torah says, and the Torah said, no. He said, no, he won't take your kingdom. He's only a baby. He doesn't understand what it is. Baby likes glittering things, sparkling things. He says it's shiny. So he wants to have it and to play with it. So they made a test for him. They took a chalim of one side, two buckets, two bow, bowls. One of them they put coins, gold coins, and on the other one, in the other one they put coil, you know, pecham, 
גחלים. They put inside it. לא, cold. פחמים. So, and it was sparkling, the coal was sparkling. Now, the, now Moshe Rabbeinu, they said, let's do the test. If we'll go to the gold, it means that he knows what he's doing. He understands what he's killing. So Moshe Rabbeinu took his hand and he wanted to put his hand in the gold coins. But then the angel Gabriel slapped him and put his hand in the coil. And it was so hard that he took his hands and put it in his mouth. So because of that, there were some letters in the Hebrew language that it was very hard for him to pronounce. You understand? Because of putting his hand, because it was so hot. So you can see that God again saved Moshe Rabbeinu. It saved him from all of the things that he had over there. I would like to tell you, Nashim Yekarot, I would like to wish all of you, Bezrat Hashem, Geulah Pratit, Geulah Klalit, Adem Nebal, Kol Bet Yisrael, Bezrat Hashem. I would like also to say, Leolam Yipared Adam, Mechadoro Bidvar Alakha, Yechid Barabim Alakha Kerabim, Shegea Mashiach Tzikan Kimadimera Deimeinu, Amen, Eliyahu Nabi Zafur Latov, Amen. Thank you, we're going to meet each other, Bezrat Hashem, next week, Parashat Baera, and then I'm going to tell you, I have a few things to tell you about Moshe Rabbeinu, and uh, you will see uh, the fixing that he did to heaven and the fixing that Cain, that uh, he taught it to Cain. Remind me that at the beginning of next week, there's other things. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.